welcome to the 220th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you like this video, like the video, and leave a comment with your favorite dividend paying stock. So starting in this video, I started building my own dividend tracker that doesn't rely on a third party app, right? it's my own dividend tracker. and I relied on Yahoo Finance direct API calls and they used to be free but over the last three years of my YouTube channel and pulling data uh, Yahoo Finance has systematically stopped those direct calls to Yahoo Finance API because I'm sure they're selling that data that they collect to API sellers that sell you the API and then charge you by usage. And so I think I'm going to have to resign myself to just using normal web scraping methods, which is fine. And so we're going to be using Selenium in this video to pull, to web scrape some data. And now I've done plenty of web scraping using Beautiful Soup and Selenium. And you use Selenium usually when you want to web scrape dynamic sites. And so a dynamic site means you log on to that site and then it uses JavaScript to pull a bunch of information from its internal databases and then it loads it to you. But it, you can't just type in the URL using requests and pull all the HTML. You actually have to go to the website, let it load, and then extract the information, which is what Selenium does. And so let me show you the website I'm going to be using is this Nasdaq, Nasdaq.com. Um, C for Citigroup, that's the ticker symbol right here. And what we're going to get is this uh, dividend history here. And what I want is the next payment date and the cash amount right here. Now, like I said, we could, if we were going to use Beautiful Soup, we can just inspect the element. So what I did there was right click on it. And uh, my computer is going slow because I am recording. And then you inspect that element. And if you use Beautiful Soup before, you would just do a request using Beautiful Soup and then find this class right here and get that information. But until this web page loads, none of this exists, right? It pulls the data from a website using JavaScript. And so to do that, we're going to use Selenium. So you will have to pip install Selenium. And so you can go to settings if you're using PyCharm, settings, click this plus button, uh, Selenium, Selenium right there, and then install that. And then you'll also need to install Web Driver Manager. Um, and it's not an underscore, it's a, a dash like that when you're pip installing it or looking it, at it in the um, settings. So from Selenium, we're going to import WebDriver. And then from selenium.webdriver.chrome.options, we're going to import options. Chrome.service, we're going to import service as Chrome service. From webdriver.chrome, import Chrome Driver Manager. And finally, selenium.webdriver.common.buy, B-Y, import buy. And we're going to import time. Now this is kind of new. So setting up the Chrome options. So these are all the options that you're going to tell Selenium to use. And uh, it helps you navigate websites better. And so the new Selenium allows you to run in a headless mode. And then all of these right here allow you to... Um, and this is all the possible... Uh, Internet Explorers you can use, or I'm sorry, the what are they called? The you know Chrome and Edge. And so what we're doing is we're adding arguments to this options, and you'll see why in a second. So I'm just gonna quickly or slowly scroll. If you want to pause here, and then I'll scroll to the end. If you want to pause here. 
or you can just ask me for the code in the comments. And then if you have used Selenium in the past, you used to have to download Chrome driver to your laptop or your computer, and then you have to constantly keep it updated. But now you can do driver equals webdriver.chrome, service equals chrome service, chrome driver manager dot install, and then the options equals chrome options. And by doing that, it's going to install this chrome driver using this library right here that we pip installed. So it's really nice that it's like that. The options, basically what it's doing now is you're adding all of these options that we just talked about. Then you pass it the URL, so URL equals, you just copy the URL in there. Now I'm gonna have to make this dynamic. So when I get a bunch of dividends, right, we're going to replace this with a ticker symbol and then iterate through a list of ticker symbols, changing just this uh, variable right here. But for now, we're just using this one URL. Then we're going to navigate to that page, so driver.get, pass it the URL. And now you need to, not all pages are built the same. Some pull a lot of information. And so this time.sleep allows you to pull the uh, amount of time it takes to get the sleep or to get the website to load. So this just sleeps the driver for two seconds before doing any other, other code. So it doesn't know we're using Selenium. You can use import time and then time.sleep in any code just to stop for a couple minutes uh, before you move on to the next chunk of code. Uh, but for here, we're pausing for two seconds. And then once the, and then you need to experiment with this too as you use Selenium. I started at five seconds and I've been slowly pulling it down to two. As I iterate through multiple ticker symbols, I will need to adjust to make sure it has time to close the browser, close the driver, and reopen the driver. But I'm just using two seconds. And then you find the element by its class. And so payment date equals driver dot find element, right? Find underscore element by class name. So by that we imported the by dot up uh, all uppercase class name dividend history sell payment date and that's where we inspected that part and you found the class name and you just copy and paste it here same thing with the amount here because driver dot find element same thing by class name and then I just copy and pasted the class name again so so just in case you're not um, familiar with Selenium. So here is our page. Um, we're waiting two seconds, if you will, for it to load. And then click on something that you want to web scrape. So you don't have to highlight it like that. I just did. And then go to inspect. You can also press F12 in Windows and it will open up the HTML for any page, but just be aware that it won't direct you, direct you directly to this, like right clicking on it. So here we have the class is dividend history sell, dividend history sell payment date right here. And then dividend history sell payment date. So I just, um, copy this part right here dividend history sell payment date same thing with the amount let's hover over amount and then inspect and it's right above it so right here dividend history sell amount and since we let the page load this time you can see that it has the text in there now all right and so what we're going to do is print the payment date dot text. You want to put the dot text, that way it finds this part in here. This is the dot text. If you just put in the class, it's just going to return this, saying, yep, found that. And then print the amount dot text. And then you want to put this in the try and accept because there's a bunch of stuff that can happen in Selenium. So um, the page might have not loaded. So accept exception as E. Now this isn't the best code because 
Um, this is just too vague of an exception, but either way, you can just print element not found and then print E. So if we got an error, you would have seen that or you will see it. And then you close the browser, driver.quit. And then it basically closes the web page. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, there we go. So the next payment date. So this is not the X dividend date for those who are familiar with dividends. This is the next payment date. And this is the this specific item right here is what I can't get from uh, Yahoo Finance right now. And then the amount, which was 53 cents, so 53 cents a share. And there we go. And now I can plug this back in to my previous code where I built my own dividend tracker. And so go click that video that I mentioned in the beginning if you want to see that that series of videos where I built my own dividend tracker and created my own dividend app. And I hope this helps you. Uh, just be careful with web scraping. A lot of websites are trying to prevent that, right? They want to sell their own data. And so you web scraping it allows you to get that data yourself. And so I hope this code lasts for several months to a year. And I hope it helps somebody. And if it did, please like this video. It helps a lot. And thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.